Over the years while editing videos, a common signature that we always see is the sound the onboard camera captures during flight. After launch, the sound increases in volume as the rocket accelerates and then starts decreasing again to a low level as the rocket slows down near apogee. It then begins increasing again as the rocket starts to accelerate on the way down. This signature is mostly independent of the flight profile and is not really dependent on absolute speed, rotation of the rocket or whether it flies in an arc. The sound amplitude and duration changes, but the sound's envelope signature is mostly invariant. We've always wondered if this could be used to detect Apogee and deploy a parachute, so we built a circuit to see if we could get it to work. It is based around the sound detector module from SparkFun Electronics. I've included the list of components in the description below. The sound detector has three outputs, the amplified raw audio signal, an envelope that represents the sound level, and a gate output that indicates when the audio level reaches a certain threshold. Now, we really can't use the gate signal because we don't know what the threshold should be set at, as this may vary from flight to flight. The envelope is ideal because it nicely cleans up the raw audio and gives us the shape we're after. The envelope signal is then fed to one of the analog inputs of a Pro Micro, which is also from SparkFun, and it's just an Arduino based board. We chose this one because it's easy to program directly via USB, it runs at 5 volts, and has analog inputs and plenty of I.O. pins. Now the Pro Micro processes the envelope signal and tries to identify when Apogee happens. The detected Apogee signal is then fed to the trigger input on our servo timer. The servo timer then drives the deployment servo and its voltage regulator provides power for the rest of the electronics. We also added a small board with status LEDs so that we could easily monitor what the circuit was doing in flight. Now these were just connected to the digital I.O. pins of the Pro Micro. And the whole thing is powered by a 9 volt battery. So let's have a look at how the circuit detects Apogee. Originally we were going to use the microphone to also detect launch, but we decided to use a brake wire instead so that any noise at the launch pad would not trigger the detector. Once launch is detected, the software samples and averages the envelope and looks for a positive slope over a number of samples. This represents the rocket's acceleration. The size of the slope doesn't matter, as long as it's positive. Once it senses acceleration, the circuit starts looking for a negative slope over a number of samples. It doesn't matter when this happens or how steep the slope is. This represents the rocket decelerating. Finally, the circuit looks for a positive slope again, which represents the rocket accelerating, having passed through Apogee on the way down. Once this happens, a signal is sent to the servo timer to deploy the parachute. Each of these states is represented by an LED on the status board. OK, so let's see this in action on a real rocket. For the very first launch, we wired up the circuit to everything except the deployment servo. The deployment servo this time was controlled by second timer, but was set to trigger until well after Apogee so that the circuit could listen for the entire flight through Apogee. We mounted a camera above the status LED so we could watch them in relation to the horizon. Four, and here is that flight. Three, two, one, go! <laughs> Good catch. After landing, we reviewed the video and saw that the circuit was triggering correctly. So for the next launch, we disconnected the deployment server from the second timer and hooked it up to our circuit. We launched the rocket again, and as you can see, the parachute deployed right near Apogee. The status LEDs also show that the circuit was responding correctly. So we tried that again. And again, the circuit looked like it worked as expected. And just to make sure, we decided to give it one more go. Three, two, one, go! Not this time.
as we can see from the LEDs, this time the circuit failed to detect the acceleration after Apogee, but detected the initial acceleration and deceleration. So in conclusion, we can see that the concept works, although it has its limitations, mostly due to the simplified algorithm used to detect Apogee. Realistically, I don't think you would use this in a serious application, as parametric and acceleration-based sensors can give you much more accurate and reliable estimates of Apogee. But it was still fun to get it to work. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.